2. 2 Peter chapter 2. And uh, this, the theme of chapter 2 is God is using Peter to warn us about the last days. Yes. And I really think sometimes as a church and as believers today, we, we kind of don't even talk about the last days and tribulation anymore. And if there was ever a time we needed to hear about the last days, it's today. You know, when you look at the news and you see how people do evil and they call it good, and, and, and the righteous and the good people are being treated horribly. You know, I look at how those little kids are treated on the Mexican border. And if you call yourself a Christian and that doesn't bother you, something's wrong. They say those little kids are being molested, being abused, and they're caught, they treat them like they're criminals. They're not criminals, they're refugees. A refugee is somebody that's seeking to be delivered from danger. Jesus was a refugee. People forget that. The children of Israel were refugees. They went to Egypt because there was no food in their land. Jesus went to Egypt because Herod was trying to kill him. Now, if they treated Jesus the way we treat the Mexicans, we might not have a savior today because he might have got killed on the border of Egypt. And we forget that in the Bible it even says, don't treat a stranger poorly. The Bible says that. Or you'll be cursed. See, America's in for some rough times. You don't treat poor people bad and expect to be blessed. That's why the Bible says when you give to the poor, you're lending to God. You know, God has mercy on the poor. God has mercy on those that are in, in bondage. You know, and if the church doesn't have mercy, then the church is in trouble. You know, when the 5,000 plus people needed to be fed, Jesus said to his disciples, what are we going to do? The disciples said, send them away. And Jesus said, no, that's not an option. And that little boy gave Jesus his lunch, and Jesus fed 5,000 plus people. So the thing is, and I'm glad Yolanda shared what she shared during the offering because we don't give offering because we want anything from God. But he does bless us when we give. He does. That's just the, the, the formula. But the beautiful thing about God is this. He doesn't look at what you give and say, well, she only gave $50 and she gave 100 and he gave 10 God don't look at that. God looks at our heart. That's what the Bible says, God loves a cheerful giver. You give a thousand dollars and your heart is bad and somebody gives a dime and their heart is good, God's looking at that dime. And he'll bless that woman greater than the person that gave with a bad attitude. And this ain't the sermon, but I just feel led to share this. I thank God for you, Mount Calvary. I thank God for all that you do, all that you give, how you've been helping my wife and I. And you guys are, are special. And my prayer is that God will send us some more help Amen. so we don't get overburdened and send us some more people to help us train them and get them ready for the ministry that God's called us to do. Amen. Now to serve the message. 2 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false prophets among you. Say that with me, among you. Among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Now, we're living in the last days, and one of the things about last days, and one of the things about the climate of the end times is, there's gonna be a lot of false preaching, false teaching, false apostles, false prophets. Have you ever noticed on Facebook, Everybody's an apostle. Oh my God. Jesus only had 12. Facebook got 12 million. And I'm like, but that's, that's the sign of the times. Because everybody wants to, to be prominent. Everybody wants to be known. Everybody wants to be the big mahaf. But Jesus said the greatest thing that you will ever be called is a servant. And we've lost that. Everybody wants to be something special. But if you want to be special in the eyes of God, be a servant. Help people, give to people, encourage people. And, that, and that's what God is looking for. But in the last days, I like what it says here. It says, but false prophets also among the people, meaning outside of the church, 
But it says, just as there will be also false teachers among you. So you're going to have to deal with the false teachers outside of the building, but there's also false teachers in the building. And so as Christians, we have to be aware. That's why if you don't ask God for nothing else, you better ask for wisdom and discernment. Because in these last days, folks are going to come across to you with stuff that ain't biblical, it ain't accurate, and it ain't coming to the throne of God. So you better know that you know that you know that what you're hearing is the truth. In Acts 17, 11, Paul was teaching and preaching to these people called the Bereans. And after he got finished, the Bereans looked at Paul and said, we're going to take what you said to us, go study, and make sure what you said was accurate. Paul didn't rebuke him. He didn't say, how dare you? I'm the apostle Paul. No, he said, no, praise God. You guys are honorable men. You know, he called, he called them honorable men because they studied the word of God. We're doing a little 40-day Bible challenge, read a half an hour a day. That shouldn't be hard for any of us because we already should be reading at least a half an hour a day. Now, it's not just so you can brag and say, I read the Bible for 40 days straight for half an hour a day. No. You're doing that so God will speak to your heart. You're doing that so God will open up the eyes of your understanding. You're doing that so God will give you more revelation knowledge. And that's what God, God wants to use us when he can't use us and we ain't hearing from him. And we're hearing from everything else. We got to hear from him. You know, sometimes when you listen to some of these TV preachers and you listen to some of the stuff they, they say, if you ain't reading your Bible, you be in bad shape. Because some of the stuff they come up with is like crazy. Oh my goodness. Some of the wild, crazy stuff that they come up with. But people listen to it. Because they're not in the word of God. They're not praying. Amen. Look at verse 2. Many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned. People will uh, attack the truth and ignore the truth when some of these slicksters are talking to you. You know, one of the things, well, I'll go back to the whole thing with the, the way these people are being treated at the border. When you look at the Bible, and you, especially in Deuteronomy, God made provisions for the poor. He made provisions for what they call the homeless strangers. Strangers were people that weren't from your land, but they were impoverished. Paul, I mean, uh, God told Moses, these are provisions I want you for these people. It doesn't matter whether they're Jews or not. And see, even the Jews messed up with this because the Jews started feeling like they were better than everybody else. And that wasn't the reason why God called them out and called them his chosen people. They were chosen to represent him. Not to, not, not to be a special club, but to, 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 to represent his love, to represent his grace, to represent his mercy. God told farmers in Deuteronomy, when you have extra crops, lay them on the side of the road so the strangers can get food to eat. Yeah, but now we have a government that's telling us we don't need meals on wheels anymore. It's a drain on the government. You know, I just read in the paper where for the third year in a row, uh, they, since the, the, our present administration, they turned down raises for federal employees. They said the government can't afford it. What? The government can't afford it? These people are working for the government. You know, and, and, and they act like $15 an hour? It's too much to give somebody a minimum wage when they, when they have to work 80 hours a week just to pay their bills? The devil is a liar. The Bible even talks about in, 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 in the old in, 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 the, in the law about don't give people an unfair balance, meaning don't have people working for you and not paying them what they deserve. That's in the Bible. We don't read that part of the scriptures, though. The crooked folks, they don't read that. They don't read where it says when you give to the poor, you lend it to God. You know, they don't read that even in the old covenant when they talk, talk about tithes, two thirds of the tithes went to the poor and the widows. We don't talk about that. But we have to because we represent Jesus. When, you know what? When a person walks past a homeless person, but then when you help that homeless person, you're like, you're like in the place of God. Because I'm going to tell you something, a lot of these homeless people, we look at them like, oh, they're, they're a blight on society, you know, you know, whatever, whatever. Those are people created in the image of God. Yes. And when somebody, you walk past somebody that had nothing to eat in two or three days, and you give them something to eat, 